Aile 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 amasagana aile aile amasagana aile 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 amasagana amasagana exact beer baba janai ai sata sata ruba ruba ai fa Ethiopia tanaka tanaka ole kaya shukula tava Ethiopia ole called night by day and ole called darkness by night and I give thanks and I just unto the name that is greater than every other name with the mention of that name every knee must bow blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the he then I sit at the other seat and is can't fall. But his delight is in the love the Lord, and this Lord I see I did the sunrise and sundown. He may go there like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring a fruit fruit in his season. Him live never ago wither, and whatsoever him do as a prosper. Yay! The heat and them now they saw them there like a chaff with the wind driven away. Therefore, the heat and them never go tamp on judgment at the sin among them in the congregation of the eye trust for the Lord God Jah. Never that we are the eye trust and that we are the sin among them always and always. I go perish. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I Jah shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I give thanks and I says unto the name that is greater than every other name. And with the mention of that name, every deed must bow. Jah! This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushodomo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a Black Pot, and each time this Black Pot is resting on the fire, we know that there's some amount of heating that is going on to produce some homogeneous product known as food. But without the ingredients, there will never be any food. My brother, my sister, it is so symbolic of Africa. Now, the black pot represents the continent of Africa, and the ingredients in the black pot that produce the food also represent the people of Africa. Now, the food that is produced is what we refer to as development right here on our continent of Africa. My brother, my sister, look at how the ingredients come together. Different sizes, different shapes, different colors, different tastes, and even different smells. But they put aside all these differences come together to produce that one homogeneous product that is very nutritious and at the same time very very appetizing mm. scintillatingly appetizing sumptuous my brother my sister as the people let's put away all our differences come together to produce that one product called development for our continent our people our land this is the black pot aka kukushodomo where we speak truth to power and my name Black Rasta. I am most excited to be with you. We are live on Pan African TV, Africa's only Pan African TV. And of course, we are the masters of Pan Africanism on TV. This is the show you've been waiting for. We are also live on Ghana Web TV, live on Black Empire TV. Our numbers are scrolling on the screen. Do business with us. We love to see your businesses prosper. We are heard all over the continent of Africa and beyond via the power of satellite. This is the show you've been waiting for. It's called the black pot. Yes, here we don't talk politics. What we talk is called patriotism. No politics. Patriotism. Politics is so infantile to us. That is why we say we don't deal with politics. We deal with what? Patriotism. We normally don't criticize on this show. If we must criticize, however, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. Because we are in the service of God and country. That is what we do here. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushodomo. And the first story I would like to look at today rolls on your screen. It says what? Whisked, not kidding with same old useless politicians. Whisked, not kidding with same old useless politicians. Mm -mm -mm. This is whisked. 
He's an Afrobeat giant. He came out with his very first song that we all jammed to. Somebody held his hand and introduced him into the world of music. Oh my God. And from that time, boom. We don't want to go too much into the history. But we all remember Holla at your boy. Right after that, his biggest hit right now is called Essence. And he keeps making hits night and day. In Nigeria, they call him Balogun. He is a very handsome chap. So he's the toast of the girls. He says he's going to get married next year. But that is not why we put him here. Why we put him here is that the kid called Whiskit is not kidding with same old useless politicians. Watch this. That is it. Watch it. It says, I will send old Nigerian politicians to retirement homes in 2023. And that's Whiskit. The kid called Whiskit is not kidding with the same old useless politicians this time. I remember that same year he says he's going to get married. Now let's read the story. It says, Whiskid, a Nigerian superstar, has vowed to retire older Nigerian politicians at the upcoming 2023 polls. That's what he says. Whilst calling on Nigerians to speak up against people in government, the essence crooner said, I'm about to go crazy on their asses this election. All these old men are going out of power this time. They need to go to an old people's home and chill out. Advising older politicians to leave the political scene, the Grammy Award winner vowed to pressurize them out of power in next year's general election. He stated, there is nothing worth celebrating in the country except for individual achievements of people in the sports entertainment and comedy industries he continued there's nothing to celebrate in nigeria except that nigerians are amazing people in music sports comedy entertainment in general i am proud of young nigerians doing things around the world in tech i have amazing friends doing amazing things whiskey added that's it no, there's nothing else, but I feel hopeful there will be change. How soon? I am not sure, but a lot has changed from growing up to now. There was a time when you could never speak to the president or anyone in government like that, but now you have a voice. Now you have a voice. Now you have a voice, my brother. It's not only in Nigeria. We have same old useless people in Ghana as well, and we need to send them to the... I don't believe in the old people's home. I wasn't brought up to send parents to old people's home. I don't agree. No matter how busy you are, no matter how much work you need to do, I think that your father and your mother should still be with you. They were never too busy taking care of you when you were growing up. Why should you be too busy to take care of them now? And you have to send them to the old people's home. I understand that they need medical care and all that. Can these people come to your facility and take care of them medically? Rather than sending them, as if sending them to a certain kind of orphanage. Some people will give you several reasons. They say, oh, when they are in the old people's home, they meet people of their age. And they talk and then they share ideas. When you were a little one growing up, you were not your father's age. But he kept you in the house to take care of you and introduce you to the old people's wisdom. Now, you want your father, your mother to go into the old people's home. Apart from that, and understand that Whiskey is speaking metaphorically. He's not really saying that they must be taken to the old people's home. He's saying that they must retire. In Ghana, our president is heading towards 80. I think next year, or just the next few months is going to be 80. Such a man should have retired 20 years ago. By 60 in Ghana, you have to be retired. I do understand that the presidency is almost like a private business where you would go out and hire a professional to come in and take off your, off your nation. But my brother, my sister, if we have a limit of age 
where you can be president, we must also have a cut off point. True? There are too many old presidents in this country. There are too many old presidents in this continent of Africa. And most of them just come in for what is called health insurance. A lot of them have cancers. Some of them have liver cirrhosis. Some of them have diseases that do not even have names in the medical dictionary. And they are here to use the taxpayers' money for their medical care. True or false? Now, the Nigerian president, Buhari, just went to England. Or was it America? For medical checkup. What the heck is happening? You have a country that is over 200 million people. How many doctors are not in Nigeria? How many Nigerian doctors are making headlines all over Africa? Yet no doctor in Nigeria is good enough to take care of this useless president called Buhari. These are the presidents, the leaders, the politicians Whiskey is talking about. Let's speak to, to power. Some time ago in Nigeria, you couldn't open your mouth. They will slaughter you and throw you in the dirty streets of Lagos. If you are lucky, they will slaughter you and put you in a gutter in Asaba. If you are not lucky, they will slaughter you and take you all the way to Ajegunle and throw you there in some dirty, rotting gutter. Nobody will find you until the end of life. My brother and my sister, we are tired of these criminals who call themselves leaders. They are only in there to steal. They are incompetent. They will never be able to make it. And that mentality in Africa must change. That wisdom is only in the heads of old people, people with gray hair. In fact, we are fools who, who were born, and they will grow into bigger fools and grow into older fools, better still, old men fools. It's not everybody with gray hair who is wise. We do understand that wisdom comes mostly by experience, but some people are also born with wisdom, same way some people are born with foolishness. This kid has spoken the truth. I support you, bro. If you need somebody to help you in this journey, count me in. With kid, not kidding with same old useless politicians. According to him, he will retire them next year. How are you going to do it? Can you share? Or is it a secret? Well, keep it a secret. Because Nigeria is such a dangerous country, we are told. People can check you out, kidnap you, finish you, and they don't care. This is the black pot. Dash it away and come along. Come! Next thing I would like to look at is rolling on your screen. And what is this next thing I am looking at? Watch it. Paul Bia, Africa's oldest bloodthirsty political tyrant, 40 years in power. It's, it's almost like a sentence. Africa's oldest bloodthirsty political tyrant, 40 years in power. This guy here is Paul Bia. And I have a song that I'm releasing for him this week. Check it out. My brother, he's been in power for 40 years. Watch this. What does it say? Africa's oldest president marks 40 years in power. And this is coming from the graphic. The graphic is the national communicator, Ghana. Africa's oldest president and one of the continent's longest seven uh, rulers, President Paul Bia, will mark 40 years in power this weekend. Nationwide commemorative activities have been uh, planned and his supporters are celebrating his achievements. But the 89-year-old old's opponents are lukewarm, calling on him to step down and hand over power to a younger generation. That's it away. Okay, bring it back. There's something that I just saw that I need to share with you. Look at it, the first paragraph. Mr. Bia's long rule has been characterized by great ambition, but also with significant failures. The mass corruption is Cameroon's biggest downfall, says the ex-head of Transparency International and former presidential candidate, Akere Muna, on the production of mines. Who are the miners? What do they produce? What do they pay to the country? 
Why do the citizens not have access to information about spending of their own country's riches? He says, the government is also engaged in a bitter battle. And that's the most important thing for me. That first paragraph there. The government is also engaged in a bitter battle against Anglophone separatists in the country's two English-speaking regions that have forced about two million Cameroonians from their homes and killed thousands of civilians. Cameroon is Anglophone and Francophone. That's it that way. Anglophone and Francophone. Now Cameroon came together through a plebiscite, an agreement. The Anglophone side had the power to join Nigeria in independence or to join Cameroon. La République Cameroon. La République, that's the Republic of Cameroon. But they decided that they would not join Nigeria. They would rather join the Republic of Cameroon in independence. They agreed. Cameroon speaks French. The Anglophone side that should have joined Nigeria decided to join Cameroon. But they decided that they will have the name the United Cameroon. Do you get it? The United Cameroon. Paul Bia decided to change it and still call it La Republique Cameroon. Looking down on the Anglophone, when you speak English in Cameroon, it's enough crime for you to be gunned down. That's what this thing was just looking at. Millions of people have run out of Cameroon and they are all over Africa in exile, in, as refugees. My brother, my sister, this president says his skin is too deli delicate to stay in Cameroon, so he's based in Switzerland. This president, my brother, my sister, is a tyrant who pays the police and soldier. And he has a special army that only reports to him, no other person. They can kill three trillion people. Nobody can question them. It's only the president they speak to. This is the president we are talking about. He's celebrating 40 years in power. Watch this. This is Ghana Web, and he says what? Africa's oldest president absent at party to celebrate his 40, 40th year in office. He's sick. This man, if he has to even use the bathroom, they have to carry him in there. Yet, he's the president of such a big country. The Anglophone people now want to break away and go away. He says no. He's gunning them and killing them every now and then. At 89 years, Paul Bia of Cameroon is Africa's oldest president and second longest serving head of state. Over the weekend, parties have been held across the Central African country to commemorate the 40 years he has been in power. Reports indicate that the celebrations were held with life-size photographs, uh, portraits of uh, Bia, but he was not present at any of the events. Thousands of people danced in front of the city hall in the uh, capital, Yaoundé. It was dropped in an enormous uh, portrait of Mr. Bia, emblazoned with the slogan, an exceptional president, a BBC Africa Live report noted. Listen to these people. Of course, it's an exceptional president. TV, useless, tyrannical president. Look how many people have gone into exile because of this so-called exceptional president. See how many people have been gunned down in the southwest. Yes, the southwest region of Cameroon, where the Anglophone people are. The Anglophone area is like a war zone. Soldiers are there every now and then. They seize people's mobile phones to see what they have on. Shoot and kill them. 
and the whole world is quiet looking at how an almost 90 year old buffoon is killing the people of Cameroon. He's celebrating 40 years in power. And some people are still dancing. That's the problem with Africa. As long as the tyrannic, tyrannical president gives them something to eat, they are okay. As long as the dirty president, the dirty leader, feeds one or two people, they will kill their own brothers to protect this thief. I pray for the people of Cameroon. I actually empathize with you. What happened to uprisings? Are you guys no longer able to demonstrate? I know the answer. No, you can't. The soldiers are there. They call them Bir. B-I-R. They will shoot and kill you. Nobody wants to go to Cameroon. Everybody is scared. When the Cup of Nations was held there, look how much chaos they had there. True. My brother, my sister, for Paul Bia, he said something which I want to share with you. Come. Paul Bia said that those people who are praying for him to die because he's old, please wait for another 20 years. He believes that he will live another 20 years. He will only die when he's 110 years old. When we return, we will have more to share with you. In the interim, I have a song coming out for this man called Paul Bia this week. Check it out. Spread the word. Again, I have a quote on tyrannic kicker people like him. Hey! Why <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, President of America, he's talking about tyranny. Tyrannical Paul Bia. Tyrannical African leaders. When we all thought that tyranny was over. No, sir. It's been rebated in Africa. What is Thomas Jefferson saying? He's saying that when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. But when the government fears the people, there is liberty. You know why? Because the government has the power. So when you fear the people, what do you do? You do what the people deserve. Right? Think about it. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. Next thing coming up. What does it say? Watch it. Another bouquet of booze for government at Hogbe Chochoza. Hogbe Chochoza. We always say a bouquet of flowers. If it's the opposite. When you give flowers to somebody, you are showing love. How about when you are showing resentment? Booze. Woo! In the Volta region. And it happened in the Volta region. They booed this guy. When he came in, oh, he was a gentleman. Nice. Cool. Nicely spoken. But he started becoming a propagandist. 
following the government to lie and deceive the people. So Ghanaians saw him and branded him the biggest liar. Nobody wants to listen to him. President Nana Akufu Adu was booed for the very first time in the history of the presidency in Ghana. Right at a music festival, Global Citizen Music Festival, they booed him. And I prophesied here that booze shall be his portion till the end of his time. The best way he can stay away from that, in fact, two ways. Be able to satisfy the people. Do the needful. Two, stay away from the public. He didn't listen to me. He went to Kumasi, his own stronghold. They booed him like a bad habit. He ran out with his pot belly. They booed him a third time elsewhere. I don't remember. And then he decided that he would listen to me. Now when he wants to address the people, he will come on TV. He was going around doing propaganda, this president. Oh, we are built here. We are cutting the sword for this. We are doing that. We are doing that. We are doing that. The boos were too much. He couldn't take that anymore. He's too old for that. So he decided to stay away and push his comedian vice president to go there. To God be the glory. He arrived at Hogbe Chochoza in the Volta region. Come! I love my ever people. They will welcome you. Agbaja, 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 Agbaja. Agbaja, Agbaja. Watch it. Baumea booed during Hogbe Chochoza in Angolo. Vice President Mahamadu Baumea was at the receiving end of GS at Angolo. This occurred during his address at the Hogbo Chochesa Festival in the Volta region on Saturday, November 5. In the speech, he touted the importance of the Anglo state to the development of the country. But the teeming crowd did not stay silent when he began to enumerate the government's achievements despite the prevailing hardship. It means he was doing propaganda. For in the first time in our history, we have free TV, ET, TV. And for the first time in our history, we have free SHS, he said, amongst other things. The booze and chance of disapproval drowned the rest of his delivery as he shouted atop his voice. My brother, while the noise grew louder, Dr. Baumia added that there are many people who don't like good news, but this is good news. Ghanaians are facing a major increase in the cost of living, cost of fuel prices and so on, and have to do more to make sure that we can relieve the burden of Ghanaians, he added. Dignitaries included, including Vice President Mahmoudou Baumia, uh, Asante Hine, Otunfo Osetu II, Kwenhumahini and Gamanche grace the occasion. Dash it away. My brother, my sister, the president pushed his stooge, his spokesperson, the chairman of the economic team, the failed, useless economic team. Now the finance minister doesn't want to resign. He doesn't understand why he should resign when the chairman is there. Mahmoud Baumia was seen as the man who would be able to deal with the economy. But look at it. He had worked with the World Bank. He had worked with where, 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 where. And look at the delivery. So the, 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 the finance minister doesn't understand why he should leave. When this empty-headed economist is still sitting there. He doesn't understand. When the president pushed him, he had an agenda. Now he's also been booed. Thank God they did not send the finance minister there. Imagine the finance minister was the one at Ogwecho Choza to talk. I'm sure the ground would, would have had to open to swallow him for his own safety. My brother, my sister, this is where we have reached in our democracy. 
But interestingly, Hogbe Chochoza had a very interesting twist. The very first time and the last time an Asante Hini visited and participated in Hogbe Chochoza was when Kwekubia the first went there in the 1800s, in the 19th century. Over a hundred years later, this Otun Four, I salute you. Ah, Otun Four. Ah, Otun Four. Ah, Otun Four. It will be an honor to sit with the Otun Four, shake his hand, and say, Nana Hey! Hundred year old history, over 100 year old history. Asante Hini has broken it. And he said something that, that touched my heart. Ah, Asante Hini. Otunfuo. You know what he said? Asante Hini spoke to the people of the Volta region and said, Coming over here, some people thought that, and I've been saying it, that the Everest and the Asante don't see eye to eye. But it is not true. We are intermarrying. We are good friends. We are okay. And I came here to prove that point. Ah, Asante. I am advocating right now that Asante Hini be given. You know what I'm talking about? The peace laureate. He should get the peace laurel. From the UN. Asante Hini should be made a peace laureate. Because what this man has done over the past few years have overshadowed anything wrong that he would have even done. He was instrumental in brokering the peace in the bomb. Very instrumental in the recent skirmishes that happened elsewhere. And now, he has gone all the way to the Volta region, where we have seen two great leaders embrace, sit on one stool. Hey! Embrace! I don't know if the Volta chief even speaks three. I don't know if Asantehini speaks ever. But they, were, they spoke tongues. They spoke in tongues and they understood each other. It's just like two players, one from Ukraine and another one from Iran, on the football pitch, World Cup. They don't speak each other's language, but they are able to talk to each other. And you wonder what language they are speaking. That thing he is doing here. I am touched. I'm going to present Asante Hini with a certain, I don't know whether to call it an award or a gift. I think it's a gift. I salute you, Nana. Now, this is so symbolical. Hmm? And I need people to have a look at this very clearly. The other chiefs and kings, it doesn't matter how you call yourself. It is time to put away old, 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 outlandish grudges and live positively to get with the as for Baumia and his booze, there is a propaganda going on that he was not Budo. Propaganda. Bring me that headline. Baumia was booed for mentioning non-existent projects. Hogwe Chocho planning committee member. Dash this one away. There's another one. Maybe I won't be able to show you that. But it is there. He says, oh, Baumia was actually clapped for. In fact, they were praising him because he was speaking so well. Of course, it happened to the president. When they booed him, propagandists said they were actually cheering him on. That's why I love their accounts. They say, say umami wu, and I say, oh, papa wu, na u se, on we are. can This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonamo. 
where we speak truth to power. When we return, we will talk more. But I want to ask you a question. And the question is this. Africa has some island nations, right? Island nations. You know that, right? Island nations. That is a nation, but it's an island. We have some island nations. Which one of them is the biggest? Hey! Hey! <laughs> This is the Blackport, a.k.a. Koko Shonu, where we speak truth to power. And of course, it's Madagascar. They say Africa without Madagascar is not Africa. We love that beautiful island of Madagascar. I love it. But I wonder if I can live on that island. It's just surrounded by water. One day when the water gets angry and decides to swallow it, what happens? Hmm? I think everybody in Madagascar must learn how to swim. As for fish, they and fishes are very good friends. Any which way. Take our numbers off the screen. Talk to us. You can send us a WhatsApp call, a WhatsApp message. Let's do business. We are open to doing business with you. We are head and watch all over the continent of Africa and even more via the power of satellite. And we are also on social media. Yes. And we have the multitudes enjoying and following us this is the blackboard aka koko show no more where we speak truth to power next thing watch it it says what Accra mayor develops cold feet remember that giantly man henry kwate powerful man huge he's a giant came in with a lot of actions but it looks like something is happening he's developing cold feet Henry Kwate stops demolition of unlawful scrap structures at Ramza site. Now the Ramza site is a place that is not supposed to have buildings. The government has gone in to demarcate that place and say, hey, this place is endangered. Nobody should build anything there. That's a Ramza site, right? All right. So, I read, the Greater Accra Regional Minister Henry Kwate has stopped the demolition uh, of unlawful structures raised uh, at the Ramza site, Sakumono, in Accra, despite initial plans to do so. He revealed this during a stakeholder meeting in Accra on Sunday, November 6. He explained that the government has put in place measures to regularize the build, say, here and now, that not a single building will be demolished. We will go through some process of discussion and we'll have this kind of meeting again in about three weeks time by which time we would have had a clear roadmap the giants he went all the way to abu Brush, shook up the place and sent all the them all of them the onion sellers and moved the onion market and we all applauded ramza site was one of the sites Sir John, the dirty ghost, built on and even owned. That dirty ghost, Sir John, also owned land in forest reserves. The dirty ghost from Wunua, who is resting in the hottest part of hell, who Satan is dining with. In fact, Satan is using his backside as his delicacy right now. You know that. In hell. Today, they are telling us that the Ramza site, all the buildings there, they will regularize them. You know what that means? They will legalize them. 
This is supposed to be a blighted site. That's a technical term. For your own safety, you might be told that don't build here. Don't build there. Henry Quartet swore to God and told us that he would destroy all the buildings there. Now power past power. The Lilliputian president has called him aside and said, look, don't let your size deceive you. You have the size, but you don't have the power. I have the power. Don't dare destroy anything there. Maybe he even what I had to say, all the land said John had in his will. Don't touch any. This is a dangerous, dirty precedent. I know Henry Quarte wants to work. I know he wants to see a different country. But politics, dirty politics, is the bane of this country's development. How? Ramza site? And all of a sudden, we are told that the buildings will not be destroyed anymore. That they should stay there. So... What the heck is happening? Sir John warned us a long time ago that he had given those pieces of land to his family forever. This government is proving to us that it was the gospel the dirty ghost spoke. I am so shh. I don't want to use that word. My brother and my sister, the least said about this, the better. But let me speak to Henry Kwate. Honorable Kwate, with all respect, I've never said one word against you. I think that you are a very honest man and I think that you want the work to happen. I believe that you are a loyalist to the nation. I believe that you want to see the country change. If this dirty president is making you do things that are untoward to your mindset, resign. Remember, it was on this same show I prophesied that this man would be sacked. How many of you remember? How many of you remember? I prophesied on this show that this man had said something that he was going to destroy all the buildings in the Ramza site. Do you remember? We're going to look for that tape, cut it and post it. I said, by doing this, you would go against this dirty Lilliputian president's dictates and you'll be fired. Is this not tantamount to firing? Now you have to come back like a little baby, swallow the vomit, and behave like a toddler. Oh, yeah, it was me who said we would destroy it. But we are not going to destroy it anymore. We are going to regularize it. And please, with all dignity and honor, if I were you, I will resign and leave these dirty people to handle their dirty business. You are too clean for this dirty business. A word to the wise is enough. Those of you who watch the blackboard, do you remember this prophecy? If you don't want to call it prophecy, forget about it. Call it a prediction. You don't need a prophet to tell you this. The way things were going, you could just tell. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunum, where we speak truth to power. Next thing. And what does it say? Is that the last one? Kumi prekum. Demo in pictures. Watch this. Kumi Prekun reloaded. Demonstration in pictures. In fact, the first Kumi Prekun was organized by the president in power now. Nana Kufuado. And if we had the power to play back what he said, he was speaking, slanging. In those days. Because he had just come in fresh from Britain and hungry for power. He spoke about for about 20 minutes and we couldn't understand anything. And Ghanaian said, Ah, oh, Tibrofo. Tibrofo? He speaks good English, he can rule us. They gave him the power. See, can't pay the day. Over the weekend, people came out to 
demonstrate the number was not as huge as the last one we had for fix the country. And I can explain. There are hungry people. They have no money to pay for transportation. Number two, this is a country that has become so dangerous. Anybody can abduct you at any time. Greedy bow fruit. Yeah. Greedy bow fruit. Fly out of a luxury jet as usual. My God, watch it. Greedy bow fruit. Look at the people. They carry their placards. And I hear some propagandists say, oh, but the number was not even as huge as the other one. They took some, and I said, these are idiots. Even if it was five people who went out there to demonstrate, the message has been sent there. My brother, the whole Ghana would have come out had it not been the hunger. You go and demonstrate and go home and eat what? The small energy you have, you want to keep it till evening, then you go and get some small kinky and eat. If you go shouting, hey, cho boy, cho boy, and you are hungry. As for Nana Akufuado, we don't need any more demonstrations to show him that. He has fallen out of favor with the people. Your own prophet, Prophet Owusu Bempa, has denounced and renounced and decided to excommunicate you. He has defrauded you. The magic chair he gave you, your propagandists are still sitting there trying to prove that it is important for security reasons. What a president. In all our history, no Ghanaian president ever carried a chair around. No Ghanaian president has ever been threatened more than Kwame Nkrumah. But Nkrumah survived it. The ghost of Nkrumah is chasing you guys. The demonstration happened. People fell aside. People cried. And if you look at the, some of the people who spoke, you could feel the power. Bring the dirty bow fruit there. Greedy bow fruit. I don't know what they are talking about. But this greedy bow fruit. Greedy bow fruit. Bow fruit is a certain, you know, round thing like that, you know. That people eat is both fruit. Mm. Some people say the correct English word is a uh, ball float. Ball which floats. But we in Ghana, we say both fruit. I don't know how you call it in Nigeria, in Cameroon. In fact, I wish you could find me the photo of both fruit. So that I'll put it there. Greedy both fruit. But that's what it is. The demonstration happened. People came up on the streets. They fought. They made a lot of noise. Ghana police was there and acted so professional. The people did their demonstration. They set the message across. Some people are trying to downplay this. As Kwesi Pat said, the way the country is going, he fears that there might be a coup d'etat. If people are truly angry and they go out on the street and you look at the numbers because one they did not even have time to advertise this number two they did not have the money ah that's it that's a greedy bow fruit that's bow fruit i think there are two types of bow fruit there's one that is heavier and darker this one is the lighter one in hungry times this one, when you hold one and squeeze it, it becomes poof like that. Greedy bull fruit. Yes, greedy bull fruit. My brother, my sister. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamu, where we speak truth to power. On this note, I would like to say thank you so much. But I would like to encourage the nation that it will get better. It will only get better when we are actively involved. I hear GMA, Ghana Medical Association. They want their salaries to be pegged to the dollar. In other words, if the Ghana city depreciates 30% to the dollar, their salary should be increased by the same 30%. And I keep saying that patriotic people don't talk like that. You can say that. If the Ghana city depreciates, 
by 30% or 35% or 40%. You can tell because you go to the market and prices of things increase, right? You want your salaries to also be raised to that level without mentioning the dollar. Now, when you mention the dollar, you make it the almighty. You make it a reference point. The more you give credence to the the more you aggravate things, the more you look down on your sovereignty, the more your independence becomes a mirage. The more you are hyping the dollar, the more you demean your city. Why is it that the dollar is less in value to the pound, yet the dollar is the most popular? And everybody is talking dollar and not pound. You know why? The hype. The marketability. How many people would prefer carrying dollar to carrying pound when they are traveling? Because even though the pound is higher in value to the dollar, the dollar has been so hyped and it's known all over that when you walk out anywhere and present it, they know it. It's time to give value to our African currencies. In fact, this is the best time for Africans to come together and issue one currency. Ghana Medical Association, you could have made the same point without giving credence to the dollar. Just talk about depreciation. Depreciation, I support you. But the dollar you brought in, don't follow the dirty politicians who sit in parliament to read the budget, and then their budget is in the dollar. Oh, we have built a road from Kwamina and San to John J. Memorial Association, and it was six million uh, worth of uh, road that we built dollars, and it cost us six trillion dollars to build. When the Americans are reading their budget, and you hear CD, that is the day America will burn. CD. Go to America, bring out the first one million Americans. And ask them if you know what the city is. They will ask if it's an animal in Africa. They don't know it. They don't. I remember. That was somewhere in 2002. If I'm not mistaken. I went to the Ivory Coast. And at the border. I wanted to buy bread. And I removed See, The policeman almost slapped me. 2002. Spoke plenty French into my ears, I could understand. Because I was just 500 meters away from the Ghana border into the Ivory Coast, wanted to buy bread. 2002. Even the border distance like this, the city is valueless. And now, the Ghana city and the Nigerian Naira are competing at the bottom as the worst performing currencies in the world now. The Sri Lankan rupee has even gone up. The one which used to be the worst performing currency. After the demonstration, ha, they lent sense. It went up. Now the Nigerian Naira and the Ghana city they are getting married at the bottom. And if you don't know greedy bullfoots countries my brother my sister i want to say one thing these demonstrations must continue i wish this was done every day like they did in the arab spring every day right now car owners are not driving them anymore passengers are stranded all over ghana let the demonstrations continue on a daily basis in front of the presidency, night and day, and force the greedy bullfrog out. That's how it will work. Demonstrations. If they don't fix the economy, then they will have to leave. I leave you, says. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. <laughs>